Good day, everybody, wherever you are in the world. We are so excited that you have chosen to join the Melvi Broadcasting Network together with yours truly, Pastor Mackenzie Kandizi, in these times that are unprecedented as we go through changes that we never imagined would grab and grasp this world of ours. Everything has changed now. We have to wash hands. We have to stay home. And even our own children uh, have to uh, let go of school for a few days. In fact, they're learning through Zoom and other technological blessings that we thank God we didn't know. They were this powerful to just enhance our lives. At such a time as this, PA is everywhere. Everybody's suspicious of the next presser. In fact, we are living in a world now where the trouble is not with you, but the trouble could be with your neighbor. And so we are suspicious of each other and we have to social distance. The question we have today is, is there hope for this world? The question we have is, is there any encouragement for the child of God? Is there any anything that we can grasp at? For look at it, my friends, the whole world is at a standstill. Our politicians do not know what to do. In fact, we may blame them, but this is unprecedented. We have never had anything that shut down the whole world like such as this. And so I truly believe that God is up to something. And so we are bringing to you a word of hope today. Just a quick prayer before we get into the word of God. Father, please speak to our hearts. Encourage us empower us, resurrect us, restart us, relieve us, have your own way with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm going to speak on the subject, resting in the stone. And I'm going to use a very, uh, very simple passage of scripture, if you will. And yet, I have discovered in this moment in my study and prayer that it is a passage that is loaded with tools and principles that we can use at such a time as this. The book of Mark, and there we come to chapter four. You know the story, but I'll read it. And then we are going to mine out of this diamond mine of heaven, what we must do in order for us to rest in this stone that we are in. Verse 35 reads, on the same day when evening had come, Jesus said to them, let us cross over to the other side. Now, when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was. The other little boats were also with him, and a great windstorm arose, and the waves bit into the boat, so that it was already filling. But he was in the stern and slipped on a pillow. And the book goes on to say, And they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Then he, Jesus, arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace be still, and the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. But he said to them, Why are you so fearful? Is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, Who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him. It's a very simple passage of scripture, and yet I truly do believe that in moments like this, unprecedented moments that we're living in, my friend, we can find hope in this story that heaven has to paint for us. The Bible says it was Jesus who said to them, look, let us go to the other side. It was not their agenda. It was not them who requested this. They did not initiate the journey. This was God who started it this whole purpose of them crossing over to the other side. And the Bible says what they did, thank God, they didn't question him, they didn't argue with him, they didn't say, look at the time, why would we go there, we've been fishermen. No, they never, that's one thing, I give them kudos for simply trusting and obeying what Jesus said. And then the book says, whilst, whilst they got, they took Jesus as he was, and there were others following them alone, and then verse 37 says, whilst they were in the very perfect will of God, whilst they were obeying what God had said to them, God had said, let us, which means all of us, let us go to the other side. And whilst they were in obedience to that revealed will of God, the Bible says a great windstorm arose and the waves started beating the boat. 
that it was already filling. In other words, the water didn't just bit on the boat and stayed outside the boat. The water beat the boat and splashed inside the boat. And yet they were on the perfect mission of God. And I just want to talk to somebody in this moment that listen, even when we are in the heart of what God wants us to do, things will happen. God will allow things to come our way, not because we are in disobedience. There's a lot of stories out there and people are running everywhere. In fact, one great African-American leader that I know always says that people, all what people don't know, they always make up. Mm, I love it. Whatever people don't know, they always make up. So as we look at this, at this crisis that the global world has, there's a lot of stories. You cannot turn on your television because you'll be distressed and discouraged because everybody is trying to make an issue out of something that they are completely ignorant of. My friend, I want to encourage you right now that you need to understand simply because you don't understand what's going on, it doesn't mean you're not in the will of God. Mm. Simply because it's happening to you, it doesn't mean you, are, you don't have God in your life. In fact, the Bible says Jesus was on the boat and the stone was beating the boat on which Jesus was and the water was splashing inside the boat where Jesus was. And the book says, Jesus, I love this, whilst the stone was doing what it was doing, we are given the description of the stone and then we are, it's contrasted. I like this conjunction in verse 38. It says, but Jesus was in the stern a slip on a pillow. Uh, anything that comes after but, it means it defines everything that came before it was put there. I, I want you to understand one thing and says, well, whilst Jesus was there, the good thing that I love about it, it says they, not one of them. Now you need to understand this team that Jesus had, they had selfish ambitions. Uh, Peter would have been the first one to run. You remember one time he said, let me walk on the water, and he did it. But in this one, it says they moved from being independent contractors into collaborative partners. Uh, oh, God. It, it, the storm let them get united. The storm brought them together. The storm got them. And the book says they awoke him. Not, it, the book does not say they, they, they assigned one to awoke Jesus. But I don't know how 12 men with bass and turner and baritone voices in united in the midst of the night out of fear, all of them in unison without practice. They simply said to Jesus in what voice, teacher, do you not care that we perish? Look at our crisis today. It's amazing that the world where racism was once an issue, where look down on each other was once an issue. This crisis has brought the world to be one. These collaborative efforts now, nations that were the best in the world are suffering as nations who are the worst nations in the world. Is it, a, is it not amazing that a crisis could make stuff happen in America that's happening in, 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 in New Zealand, happening in South Africa, happening in Australia? There is this stay at home, this shutdown all over over the world. Why? Because this storm is bigger than an individual. This is a global storm. And the book says they all cried out to God. Mm. And they said, don't you care? And the book says, Jesus, thank God, Jesus heard their cry. He heard their panic. And, and Jesus got up and Jesus rebuked, rebuked the wind, and he did not speak to the wind, but he rebuked the wind by speaking to the source of the wind. Oh, I love it. The book says he rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. Here are a few things I want to share with us when it comes to rest, resting in the storm. Jesus was resting in the storm when everybody around him was panicking and running everywhere. What is it that we can learn about the storm? What encouragement can we get out of this storm that we have. I'm learning, my friends, watch this, better get the pen and write something because you may need this to study with your family or, or maybe a tweet or text somebody or WhatsApp someone or throw it on Facebook. You don't know who needs something because we are in this thing together. Everybody needs encouragement as to how can we rest in the storm. Here it is. From the story, I learned that God uses what he doesn't cause. Mm, I love it. I love it. God uses what he doesn't 
cause. In other words, the book says, even though he was asleep, look, you cannot blame him for causing this one because the wind came when he was asleep on the pillow. God always uses what he doesn't cause. Simply because God is using it, it doesn't mean God has caused it. It is. So in other words, instead of going to God with blame, we need to understand when storms come, whatever the storm is, our mighty God has power to use the storm that he hasn't Course. I don't know who I'm talking to right now, who is sitting not only in this global pandemic, but who is sitting in a personal storm where you have tried to blame yourself. You've tried to look at God and make God the enemy of your soul as if God is the one after you. I want you to understand that no matter who causes it, no matter how its origins, where it starts, we serve a God who is specializes in using, in using stuff that he doesn't cause. Mm. He is number two. When the storm comes, that which we are in right now, it is learn to appreciate the power of association in the storm. Uh, I, I love it. Learn to appreciate the power of association in the storm. The book says, I love this story. I, I was looking at it and God, I started shouting. I started running. I started clapping my hand because when I see the word they, I mean, we normally find they negatively being used. But in this case, there was association among the disciples. They came together. You know, the doubting Thomas didn't doubt this time. Ooh, I love it. You need to understand, he even the doubting Thomas he was willing to literally collaborate with the speak first Peter and think later and the calm John who was just thunder waiting to happen and all of them came together. Number two, when you're in the storm, this global storm we're in, learn to appreciate the power of association in the storm. Look at the world. Nations are helping nations that cannot uh, help themselves. Uh, people are sending masks. We ever thought that we could get masks and exchange masks and send help to each other because we need help with each other. When you are in a storm, my friend, learn to appreciate the power of association in the storm. Here's where the kicker is. Uh, before the storm comes, God always has the people you need to be with you in the storm. So when the storm comes in, it's not the time for you to discover whose fault is it, who is on the boat, who is not supposed to be on the boat. But when the storm comes in, as our nations are doing, as the world is doing, and not finger pointing, but everybody simply following the guidelines, because we need to beat this. If this pandemic is alive in one country and is dead everywhere, it is going to come to everybody. So the world now, we have a collaborative thought and thinking, and I love the way the world is coming together. I'm talking of the prideful and the ones who are uh, literally forgotten and neglected and everybody's listening to everybody. Learn to appreciate the power of association in the stone. Why? Because the verse, verse, verse 30, 38 says, they, they, they are walk him. Uh, they are walk him. It, 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 it got me. Storms always reveals people seeing tensions toward you. You see, when the storm started, Jesus was asleep. And, 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 and we know they were, they were experienced fishermen. So I want to believe that they tried what they could do before they got to Jesus. Uh, it was the storm. I want to believe in the thick in the darkest and the thickness of the night and the clouds were rising and a lightning bolt just flashed from nowhere and it, like a net stick and out all of them they saw the form of Jesus who was in the stern far from them and, and, and then because of the storm it is storms always reveal people seeing tensions towards you in other words you'd have never known that people need you had it not been for the storm uh, uh, they have no problem with him slipping but when the storm started bidding, they had different intentions and they went to Jesus. Now, here's what happens when people's intentions are revealed in the storm. Watch this. Don't define them by their initial intention. Mm. I, I love it. Because when, when storms come, people are, are fearful first. Fear grabs people. Fear makes us doubt each other. And so when storms come in, don't, don't, don't define anybody by their initial move. 
when you look at this text, they, they seem to be blaming Jesus. Teacher, don't you care? Are you really serious? You're asking Jesus if he cares? Guys, were you not there when he turned water into wine? And you're asking me, don't you care? Were you not there when, when Jesus himself uh, 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 healed the man who was born blind? Were you not there when Jesus stopped the issue of blood? And you are saying to me, don't you care? I mean, look at yourselves. You're a fisherman. You are nobodies. And now you hang around with the very son of God and you say, I don't care. Well, before we judge them, here's whatever. The initial reaction in a storm is not seriously the, the greatest move that we have. I'm in this powerful country where when this pandemic started, my president simply said, it'll go away. That was the initial reaction. It, it was, it's not that deep. It's like flu. It's going to go. And now when you look at the map of the world, my country has got more cases than anybody in the world and we are climbing on the death on the death ladder uh, to literally surpass everybody why because it is the initial intention most of the times literally is driven by fear and sometimes by ego so when you're in a storm it's going to reveal people's intentions towards you as for the disciples, their intention was to wake him up. They could have simply, you know, shaken Jesus up, uh, but they had to speak to him too. And in their language of speech, uh, they, they, they brought in stuff that literally challenged the very essence of what he did and what he came and why he was born as the son of God. So here is what I've discovered looking at this story in order for you to discover or to survive and in the storm and resting in the storm. Your survival in the storm is tied to who you go to in the middle of the storm. You look at the story, the book says they didn't run to each other, but they went to Jesus. Uh, their motive, their in, initial wording, they, it wasn't worded right. They, 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 they appeared to be blaming him for slipping whilst they had been doing something. But here's where it is. If we are going to survive this storm, if you are going to survive any storm in your life, I want you to understand this. Your survival is tied to who you go to in the middle of the storm. Uh, what does that mean? Preacher, miss this now. Learn not to run to the phone when you are in the middle of the storm, but learn to go to the throne. Mm. You got to know how to run to God instead of running to run to people and things when the storm is hitting. Look at the world right now. What would happen if all of our world leaders would challenge the believers all over the world? And quote that text that we know, if my people who are called by name shall humble themselves and turn from their evil ways and pray. If my people, if every president in this world would say to the Christians, please call on God. Why? Because your God is powerful. Even those who don't believe, don't worry about it. We are around. We are all over the world. And we know who has got the whole wide world in his hand. It is our God. Our survival, even in this storm is tied to who we go to in the middle of this storm. Oh, believe you me, God is going to have the last word. Uh, right now, we may try to run everywhere, run to the mast and run to the whatever stuff we're talking about. At the end of the day, the master we have slowed down this universe is the one who has one word from God will drive our storms away. But God wants us to know that you are not on this boat of cold life because you wanted to go somewhere. All of us are created the way we are created because God says, before I knew you, before you were born, I knew you. Before you were even formed, I knew you. I called you by name and I gave you a purpose. I have already anointed you for something to do before you were born. In other words, you have a prenatal purpose. Oh God, I love that. We got into this boat called life because it was God's initiative for you and I to be created. So when the storm comes in, don't forget whose agenda it is. <laughs> uh, Acts chapter 17 says, it's God who puts boundaries. It's God who calls, who calls us nations to have boundaries, to be called what they are called, Africa, America, Europe, all the continents. It's God who has put those boundaries there because he's up to something. And here's what it is. When you are in the storm, 
You need to understand that your survival is tied to who, not what, but to who you go to in the middle of the storm. The disciples ran to Jesus. And when they got there, uh, they said, let, let, let's talk a little bit. Don't you care whether they were screaming or they were, I don't know. All I know is that when people are afraid, they, they get out of character. And this is what's happening all over the world. Some people, in order for them to stay home and lock down, soldiers have been dispensed on the streets of the world. And some people are, going, are being bit down and some maybe even dying. Nobody's noticing that because you know what? People are afraid and even the soldiers are afraid. They are not beating anybody because they want to kill anyone. They are now beating people if they are doing that anywhere in the world because they are afraid for their own lives. I'm learning, my friends, when the storm comes, it is very important for us to understand that storms will make people pay attention to you. If it were not for this storm, they would have never paid attention to Jesus. Uh, they would have arrived on the other side of uh, this lake without even bothering Jesus at all. We are not told what they were talking about uh, before the storm came. We, we are not told if they were awake themselves or if they were asleep, some of them. All we discover is that when the storm came, it made them pay attention to Jesus. It wasn't time for them to argue around. And I want you to understand that this kind of storm we are in, I truly do believe that God's hand is in it. Why, how can I say that? Because look here, this world belongs to God. I don't care what the enemy, what the devil says and tries to do. He cannot even do it without the permission of God. This world belongs to our, he created this thing. Whoever God uses as, as a worker or as an instrument or a tool to accomplish his purposes, it's all in his hands. And I want you to understand that this storm is going to make us pay attention to Jesus. Some of us have been Christians for years. Christianity and going to church have become a ritual. Is something that we just did on the weekends. We are not thinking. We were not. Now we are at home and now we have to start thinking. What am I going to study? Who's going to preach to me? Because we thought that pastors were the only channels through which God speaks to us. And we thought that deacons were the only ones who could pray a prayer and elders are the only ones. In fact, we thought that announcements were part of the story of redemption. Now you are at home. You got all the time. You've got your family for the congregation. And what strategy do we have? And God has slowed the world down so that we, you and I, can pay attention to him. Be faithful in the storm. What is it that God is revealing to you? What are the things that you had neglected in your life that this pandemic has literally brought your attention to? Some of us, our health was falling apart. And so as we don't go out and eat and now we are learning to cook back home again, can you see yourself fitting in that dress that you thought you would never get in again? Some of us were on a medication, blood pressure, stress everywhere, and now the headache is gone. What is it that this pandemic, whilst everybody is jumping ship and going crazy, what is it that God is calling your attention to? What about that child of yours that you never had time with? because you are busy making money to send them to school now that they are home all the time. Have you discovered how old they've grown? I was looking around talking to my girls and I've noticed, my goodness, these people have become, I have human beings and grown people in my house. Storms have a way of helping you and I pay attention to things that we neglected. Some of us, we miss church. And we had never missed church in a long time. Come on, talk to me, man. Some of us had never missed church. We got to church whenever we wanted to go to church. And we arrived, whatever time we arrived was the right time. And whatever time we left was the right time. And don't you ever ask me where I was and why you didn't see me. Because you don't know my relationship with God. Now, for the first time, you realize it is so sweet to trust in Jesus. And what a fellowship, what a joy divine to lock arms and worship with fellow believers. 
You, you cannot become what God wants you to be alone. You need other believers in order for us to become what God wants us to do. But we miss church. I'm looking forward to the day when God is going to drive away this stone and we're all going to go back to church for the first time. And I know the dignified don't want nobody to clap their hands. Don't want nobody to say amen. I think on that day, please, Melby Broadcasting Network, we better follow people with our cameras and see the response of people just celebrating God for what he has done. Stones, they will make people pay attention to you. And the other thing that's there with our time moving on, the right person in the stone will make everybody survive the stone. <laughs> if it was not for Jesus on the boat, all of them were going to go under. The right person will make everybody survive the stone. I don't want to challenge us as we go in looking around and needing encouragement. Do you have the right person in your life? Is Jesus part of your life? Can you truly look in the mirror and say, he walks with me and he talks with me? Can you truly say what he says I will do, where he leads I will follow? He is my savior. Not only did he save me, he's my master, meaning I'm the servant and he is the boss. Can we truly say he, he, he owns it all? May this stone, may this pandemic drive us to a place of discovering what we now know that money is not as powerful as we thought money was because now you've got more money than stuff you want to buy why because now you can only leave your house for the essentials there's more money in your pocket now than when there was no pandemic what is it that god is saying to you look here if you hook up with me you will survive the storm connections matter when is storm time when you're in the storm connections matter people that you talk to are you those people you pray with those people who check on you notice who cares about your well-being in this pandemic notice who calls you and says hey i'm just checking on you they're not looking for money they're not looking for stories they just want to make sure you are alive and well no connections matter not only people what they do for you but what you do for others be the right person in this stone to somebody else. The other thing I discovered is that when you look at it, the book says the boat was filling up with water and, and when they went to Jesus, storms move us. Now it is, storms have the ability to move us from stress to strategy. The book says, I'm just on verse 38. It says, they, they, they are walking. They went together. In other words, they had to have a strategy of waking him up. They had to neglect and ignore the stress of the storm in order for them to have a strategy. And I want to encourage you, my friend, that whilst at this moment we are putting some of the people of God to sleep as they die with the corona and some are going to survive, I want you to understand that God is moving from stress to strategy. From independent contractor doing my thing, it's my life, to a collaborative partner with the God who is able to calm the storm with one command. I've said this and I believe this, that whenever you're in the storm, always remember that divine revelation. Divine revelation demands a situation for its manifestation. In other words, whenever a storm comes, Every storm is purposeful. It's not there just for God to show how big he is or to allow the devil to simply demonstrate how big of a big wolf he is. But every storm is a situation that God uses for his next level of divine revelation. God use your storm to bless you. This storm brought them to a place where now you look in verse 41, it says, listen, it they moved from what? Because the stone started to who? He used the stone to change their focus. Why does God use the stone to bless us? Because God still has more. This, 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 this crisis is not the end of the world. I've got breaking news. This is not the end of the world. Those of us who have been interacting with scripture, this is not even one of the last plagues of the world. Come on, talk to me. This is not the end of it all. God still has more. God can use this storm to bless you. Some of us, it's not money that's blessing now, but it's relationships that we've neglected. 
as we check on each other, as we text each other, as we call on people, not only that, as we pray for people, this storm has gotten us to be blessed. Where I am, as I walk around, I've seen so many people walking and, and people just walking as families and, and people running with their kids in strollers and pushing them. And, and what an amazing blessing that this has become. Not only that, I want you to understand that uh, God still has more, and that's why he must bless us through even this storm. We must move from event-driven to prophecy-driven. What does that mean, Pastor? Don't forget what the Bible says. Jesus said to them, let us cross over to the other side. What does that mean? Don't forget what he said before the storm. Mm. He told them they were going to cross over to the other side before the storm. So I want to encourage a believer out there who is panicking and trying to get a word from anybody, any place, everywhere. You need to understand that the revelation God had in your life before this pandemic came, I want you to understand the same God who gave you what you needed and took away your fear is still able to make it happen even now. Don't forget what he said to you before what does the story teach us how can we rest in the storm well you can only rest in the storm when you learn to believe god and not the storm believe what god said in other words learn to believe what god says more than what you see there's a difference between believing what you see and believing what god said jesus told them let us cross over to the other side and when God says in Jeremiah 29, I know the plans I have for you, believe that. When Philippians 1 says, he who began this good work in you shall bring it to completion, believe that. You need to understand that God is not going to let this world be wiped off of people because when Jesus comes again, there will be a band of people who are going to welcome him, him coming in. There will be leaving righteous saints that who are going to simply join up with the ones that are falling asleep and somebody is going to welcome Jesus when he comes again. So believe God in this storm more than the storm. What made Jesus fall asleep in the midst of the storm? Here it is. Jesus allowed, he always allowed his conviction to control his conclusions. <laughs> Jesus knew he came, he says, I came to seek and save. Is that what, that's what he says? And he says, if I am lifted up, in other words, Jesus knew the only thing that would kill Jesus was him being on the cross. No matter how angry the storm was, Jesus knew the storm was not the end. He had a conviction in what God has said. And I want to challenge somebody who is everywhere, losing your mind. God is saying, be still and know that I am God. That's the word of God before this pandemic. Our joy does not come from, from the waves and the sea's absence, but our joy comes from the agenda of the one who said, come on, let's go. It's his initiative for you and I to be born. And the last thing verse 41 says, look here, uh, uh, now after Jesus spoke and, and he called on peace and he then said to them, why are you afraid? And in verse one, in verse 41, it says, they feared exceedingly and said to one another, who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? Are you ready for this? The storm drove them back in line. Storms drive us back in line. They started with who? The one who told them they were going to go to the other side. They got caught up in the stressful demonstration of a situation. But at the end of the story, I'm so glad that they were not asking what, but they were asking who. It was no longer the storm. It was a gone thought. It was over. And now they're focusing on who. What I see, that's who I know. I want to challenge somebody right now as you worry and get concerned with what's going on in the world. And the question is being asked by the disciples, well, who can this be? And I want to encourage you this weekend when we celebrate the very death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, this weekend that the world is celebrating in isolation to the question, who can this be? I've got an answer for you. It is he who was born to die so you and I could be born to new life. Who can this be who can calm the storm? I want you to understand it is he who suffered temptation so that you and I can experience victory. 
pandemic. Who can count this pandemic at such a time? Oh, my friends, it is he who was betrayed so you and I might know his faithfulness. It is he who was arrested and bound so that you and I could be, uh, could be rescued from bondage. It is he who stood trial alone before Pilate so that you and I can have an advocate, a lawyer, a man who can stand between us and God. To the question, who can this be? The disciples asked in the after the storm, who can this be? I've got an answer for you. It is he who was wounded so that you and I could be healed. It is he who endured mockery so that you and I could know dignity and joy. It is he who was condemned so the truth could set you and I free. Who could this be? It is he who was crowned with thorns so I might crown him with praises. Hallelujah. Who could this be? I've got an answer for you. It is he who was nailed to the cross so I might escape judgment, run away from judgment because he was nailed to the cross. Who could this be who can speak to the storm? The winds and the storms obey his word. Who could this be? It is he who was stretched out between two thieves. Oh, I love this thing. So I could know the reach of love. Oh, amazing love that reached down and pulled me out from the miry, miry clay of sin. He was stretched between two thieves so that I could know the reach of love. Who could this be? He is the suffering, uh, the one who suffered first so that I can drink the living water. Who could this be? He said, it is finished. On that Friday, as he was selling the deal, he said, it is finished so that I could begin to walk by faith. He said he was the Lamb of God that was slain so that I could claim his sacrifice. Come on, talk to me. And so that I could claim his sacrifice as my own. He was forsaken by the Father. You remember him asking the question. Here's the question. Why? My Father, my Father, why have you forsaken me? He was forsaken by the Father so I and you would never be rejected. It is he who chose the shame of witness so you and I can know the hope of glory. It is he who shed his blood so you and I can be white as snow. You better you better shake somebody. It is he whose heart was pierced so mine could be made whole. Anybody who needs a whole heart, he, the disciples said, who could this be? Well, he was pierced so that you and I could have and could be made whole. He was, he, and then he died. The song says they stretched him wide. And they hung him high, and there he hung his head, and there he died. It is he who died and was buried, so the grave could not hold you and I. He died and he was buried, so that the grave could not hold us stand. He arose again early Sunday morning. I just want to understand, my friend, you can rest in the stone. I'm so glad that Jesus didn't just die. The story says it doesn't end there. He rose again so you and I might experience eternal life. And here's the last one. It is he. Who could this be who can calm the storm? Who could this be who can give us peace in the midst of the storm? Who could this be who can keep us asleep when we are suspicious of our neighbors and family members? It is he who is known by his scars. So I must take up my cross and follow him. So my friends, yes, they rest in the stone. It's connected to the person who, the right person in the stone, with Jesus in the vessel. The song I used to sing in my kindergarten days, with Jesus in the vessel, we can smile at the stone as we, as we are sailing home. So be encouraged, child of God. If you don't know God, please, here's my question to you. You can, he can be found in this stone. You can start a living, thriving relationship with God, even right now. Your prayer life can be resurrected. Your study and meditational life can go to the next level because Christ has brought this not to, not to get rid of humanity, but this is a wake-up call. And somebody in this storm where God uses what he doesn't cause, where the power of association ought to be appreciated more with us. Um, where the right person will make everybody survive the storm. May Jesus be found by you because he has been looking and such is the rock all ages. My friend, blessings on you. And if I just pray now, closing prayer before I hand over to my friends, the Melvi Broadcasting Network. I'm so grateful for this platform. 
that we can encourage the world. Please, go to sleep like a baby. May he rock you in the arms of his eternal peace. For he is the Prince of Peace himself. He is peace original. When he's in your heart, you don't have to do because he is. And as long as he is, you and I, we are truly going to get to the other side. Now, I hand over this broadcast to my crew, the Melby Broadcasting Network. See you soon.